When I say solar energy, you probably think of these flat panels that can be installed onto rooftops or arranged in, in fields, uh, but there are other ways of generating solar power, and one of these ways is by using so-called solar power towers, and in this video we're going to take a look at how those work. A solar power tower generates electricity in a completely different way uh, from how normal solar panels generate electricity. And whether this is actually a superior method, so whether solar power towers are actually better than normal solar panels, um, we're going to discuss that later on in this video. But first of all, let's take a look at how they actually work. So it all starts off with the tower itself. So we take a tower, a large tower, and we put it somewhere in an area where there's lots of sunlight. So a desert is a pretty good place for one of these towers. Then we surround this tower with a whole load of mirrors. Now these mirrors will all reflect the sunlight that they receive onto the tower that they're surrounding. So that's the job of these mirrors. But of course, the position of the sun in the sky is constantly changing. Or actually, of course, the Earth is rotating, but for now, we can say that the sun is just moving through the sky. Right? Effectively, that's what's going on. And so these mirrors need to follow the sun as it moves across the sky uh, in order to keep the light focused at the tower in the centre. So, all of these mirrors are mounted in such a way that they're able to rotate, and then a computer actually rotates them to follow the sun. So now we have this focused light shining onto a big tower, which creates a spot on this tower that is incredibly hot. Now how do we generate power with that? Well, there are two ways of doing this. There is the old way and the new way. So let's go through the old way first. So the old way of generating power using this mechanism is by pumping water through this tower. Now when the water passes through that very hot part of the tower, it heats up, it starts boiling, and it turns into steam. We then take this high-pressure steam, make it rush through a turbine, and the turbine is connected to a generator, which generates electricity. That's the old version of the solar power tower. But the problem with this system is that when there is a cloud in front of the sun, the amount of light being focused onto the tower decreases. Therefore, the amount of water we can boil decreases, our steam pressure decreases, and we immediately get a drop in power output from our tower. Also, when the sun goes down, so when there is no light at all, well, then of course we're not generating any power either. So it's kind of like a normal solar panel. When there is less light, there is less power. And when there is no light, <laughs> there is no power. So the new version of the solar power tower get tired of saying that all the time. Let's just call it the tower from now on. The new version of the tower has a sort of a built-in energy storage system, a built-in buffer that allows it to keep delivering power even when there are clouds in front of the sun or even when it's night. So how does this work? Well, instead of pumping water through this tower, we use a molten salt. Yes, that's right. I just said molten salt. So this is not dissolved salt in water. No, it's molten actual salt. Now the main ingredient salt that we're using is sodium nitrate, which has a melting point of around 200 degrees Celsius. So when we start up this tower for the first time, we've already melted the salt, so we've already heated it up past 200 degrees Celsius to make it liquid. Then we pump it into this tower. Then, of course, the salt is going to pass through this part of the tower that is very, very hot. And that means the salt heats up even more. Um, now, an important thing to realise is that unlike with the water tower, we're not boiling the salt here, right? We're not turning it into gas salt. Right? That would be very overkill. No, what we are doing is we are just making it slightly hotter than it already was. Then this salt goes into a massive heat exchanger, which is basically a big tank where this molten salt goes into, and a pipe is running through that tank. And what we do is we pump water through this pipe. 
the water will then heat up because of the, the molten salt surrounding it, and that will turn into steam. Right? The water will start boiling, turn into steam, go through a turbine, etc. That's how we generate the power. The key part here is that this molten salt has a very, very high thermal capacity. What this means is that it takes a lot of energy to heat it up. Now that it has such a high thermal capacity also means that it's capable of holding a lot of thermal energy within it. And that means we can use it to effectively store energy. So what's happening in this tower is that the salt stores the energy, then transfers it onto the water, of course. But if there is a cloud, right, and the cloud moves in front of the sun, and less light is shining onto the tower, um, so we're not heating up that much salt, right, because there is less light. Well, that doesn't really matter, because there is enough energy stored in that very hot molten salt to just keep boiling the water and keep the generator running at its normal speed. Even when it's night, there is still so much energy stored in this molten salt that has been stored into it during the day when there was light shining onto the tower that we can still keep boiling water and therefore keep generating electricity. So this kind of solar power plant is capable of delivering very stable power to the power grid that it's connected to. It can just keep delivering the same amount of power all the time because it has this built-in buffer system it has this built-in it's kind of like a battery one of these power plants is incredibly expensive to build and also incredibly expensive to maintain because you've got all these rotating mirrors to deal with and then the tower itself and the whole plant that, that is used to generate the electricity also it's massive so with solar panels even though you might need a lot of solar panels, you can distribute them across a big area. So you can put some of them on this roof and some of them on that roof and some of them in this field here. Whereas this whole tower with all of its mirrors is one unit. You can't distribute it across a large area. You need to put it in one place. You need to have one big location where it can fit. That's also something to consider. Um, and I can think of many, many other disadvantages that solar power towers have. So for now, because these towers are just not that practical, regular solar panels are the more popular option. And they're getting more popular because they're getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, but the solar power tower does have this interesting thing which is that it has this built-in buffer it has this built-in energy storage system which is the molten salt it uses that allows it to be a more consistent power source than a simple array of normal solar panels we could add energy storage systems to regular solar panels to solve this problem but of course you have to consider that by adding an energy storage system to conventional solar panels you're increasing the cost and that might make it just as expensive as a solar power tower. Well, anyway, um, I'm sure this debate will go on for a couple of years. For now, regular solar panels are more practical. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.